Welcome biologists. Today we are going to be looking at anaerobic respiration, which is part of respiration taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology. So, so far we've had a look at the process of glycolysis and we've looked at the link reaction, Krebs and oxidative phosphorylation. Now all of these processes here are involved within the aerobic respiration process when I have oxygen present to be the final electron and hydrogen acceptor. Without oxygen present, I can't have this final hydrogen and electron acceptor. So therefore, after glycolysis, I then therefore go through the anaerobic route where I've got lactate production or lactic acid production in mammals or I have ethanol production or alcohol production within yeast cells. These are the two routes that you need to be aware of. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. So as you can see here at the top, I've got glucose, which is turned into pyruvate, two lots of pyruvate in the process of glycolysis. Now we should know from our previous videos and knowledge that the process of glycolysis produces two lots of ATP. It also produces two lots of reduced NAD as well. Now, the problem here is that if I don't have that final hydrogen and electron acceptor in oxidative phosphorylation, if I don't have that because I don't have oxygen, I have a bit of a problem because my NAD cannot be recycled. So what happens here in the process of anaerobic respiration is my pyruvate acts as the final hydrogen and electron acceptor, accepting the hydrogen and electrons back off the reduced NAD to form lactic acid or lactate. This will then recycle my NAD. So my NAD is now available again to take away my hydrogen electron from my glucose again. Now this process here produces a net production of two lots of ATP. So it's very important to remember as well that the process of glycolysis turning glucose into pyruvate occurs within the cytoplasm of a cell. It doesn't go near the mitochondria. As, uh, the next process we need to be aware of is the process of eth producing ethanol in yeast cells. So again, it starts off very similar in that glucose is turned into pyruvate in the cytoplasm of the cells, producing a net production of ATP and also two lots of reduced NAD. Now, the slight change here in that my pyruvate is then decarboxylated to form two lots of ethanol. Then my ethanol is the one that's acting here as my hydrogen and electron acceptor, which is going to accept my hydrogen and electrons off my reduced NAD to then form ethanol. And this will also allow my coenzyme NAD to be recycled again, so it can be re reused in the process of glycolysis. A couple of enzymes here that we do need to be aware of, and I have seen these on my exam. So I've got lactate dehydrogenase here, ethanol decarboxylase, and also ethanol dehydrogenase involved. Some key things here to think about, there is a lower yield of ATP here and this is because I have no oxygen and no final hydrogen and electron acceptor because I have no oxidative phosphorylation, no Krebs and no link reaction. So this means I've only got in anaerobic respiration a net productivity of two ATPs instead of the 32 that are theoretically available through aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is a lot better in terms of the yield of ATP. However, if I don't have oxygen, the cells will switch to anaerobic. So I've still got a production of some ATP available. So a couple of points here in terms of differences between these two processes and also similarities there in the middle. But there are some other points here that I wanted to show you as well. So lactic acid or lactate, this can cause problems for mammals because obviously an acid, it reduces the pH and those hydrogen ions, those H plus ions can cause trouble for tissues uh, in, this, in those cells that it's producing a lactic acid for. So that can impact on all kinds of other things. You need to think of your synoptic knowledge here into what pH can impact on and what would even detect it. In yeast cells, if it's in a closed environment where I'm not going to get any oxygen, uh, this can cause a production and a buildup of alcohol, which will eventually kill off the yeast, which occurs within uh, wine making and also beer making. The, the alcohol eventually will kill off the yeast. So why is anaerobic respiration so important? It's really important here because I get NAD recycled. This is in a red box because it's taken directly from the MART schemes. It's important that NAD is recycled so that glycolysis can continue because glycolysis needs NAD so it can be reduced again. It, and it also to produce a small number of ATP so that the cells can carry on with whatever function it's trying to do with the ATP. So there we are, we've looked at the process of anaerobic respiration. In the next video, we'll look at 
the practical investigations involved with this specification point.